Hi, this is Joan Hunter. Welcome to another exciting episode of Miracles Happen. So glad you have decided to join us today. And we today are going to really go into a whole new level of really understanding Jesus, his life, death, burial, resurrection. So I encourage you to stay tuned because we're going to have an amazing time today on Miracles Happen. Welcome to Miracles Happen. Joan Hunter has been traveling the world in the healing ministry for more than 45 years. Be aware of what the enemy is trying to do to you and say, no more. She is hosted around the world for healing and miracle services because wherever she goes, miracles happen. Joan shares her tenacious faith in how to pray for the sick. Bringing people here and sending them out to the four corners of the earth. That's my job. She traveled the world with her parents, Charles and Francis Hunter, for over 30 years. I expect a miracle tonight. Joan sees healing, signs, and wonders happen all the time in the name of Jesus, and she wants to share this with you. As anointed as I am, so are you. Whether it's filmed on location at Joan Hunter Ministries in Tomball, Texas, or from around the world, you can be sure to hear good news and receive the resounding message that miracles happen. God has anointed in the area of healing, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. So stay tuned and join us for this week's extraordinary episode of Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracles Happen. Welcome back. We are so excited to share with you, in particular me, I'm so excited to share with you about what is what I'm going to be talking about today. And a lot of people read in the Bible, they read the story of Jesus, his life and death and burial and, you know, different things like that. But I'm going to give you my understanding, interpretation on what the Word of God says where that's concerned and making it more personal than just, you know, he died on the cross. And there are many things that Jesus did for us in our behalf that I love celebrating and honoring him for what he did. Now, we all know that he died on the cross for our sins, but I went back and I read the scripture and it's like he died so that we could live. Not that we could spend eternity with him, but he, he died physically on this earth so we could live and have an abundant life here on the earth. And in addition to that, there's many times when I know you're familiar with him getting stripes on his back. He got to stripes, 39 stripes for the 39 strains of healing and, and sickness. And he took 39 stripes on his back to make sure that every area of our sickness was covered. And which I think is like amazing. So he did that, scarred his back, basically ripped the flesh from his skin so that we could be healed and we could live a healed and whole life. And then it also says that he became poor so you can be rich. He didn't become poor as an example of how to live poor. He sacrificed his home, his life, home cooked meals by his mom. He sacrificed all that and left to go and accomplish what he accomplished in the last three years of his life. And it also talked about when he died on the cross. And when his side was pierced, water and fluid came out. And the water and the fluid represents broken heart, broken heart syndrome, congestive heart failure, things like that. And he died of a broken heart. And as his side, stomach area, that area was pierced, water came forth. And as the water came forth, it was an example. Yes, he died of a broken heart, but he broken heart because he loved us so much. And he didn't want us to go and he didn't want us to go to hell. And as that happened, I'm like, when I got the reality of that a few years ago, that he died of a broken heart so that I don't have to have a broken heart. And God supernaturally healed me a broken heart, also known as broken heart syndrome. And I just thank God for that. He healed me stripe on his back for my, the cancer that was, I was diagnosed with in the year 2000. Situation on adrenal glands, approximately about 2004, 2006, totally destroyed my adrenal glands. One stripe 
was for my adrenal glands. Put my thumbs on the top of my kidneys. I said, in the name of Jesus, I speak new adrenal glands. And when you understand that everything that Jesus did on this earth was for us, more specifically, everything he did, everything he suffered was for you. And as we are in the middle, in the midst of all of this Easter time and celebration and resurrection, and once again, he died so that we could live. He was born and he lived 30 years really studying the word and becoming the word, getting baptized. Then he was released into ministry to do what he was born to do. And it's really exciting to see what God did in his life. And the sacrifices he made, it wasn't just because he wanted to sacrifice. He did it for you. Everything about our faith in Jesus Christ, it really starts with his death. And, you know, you have all the disciples and technically they weren't even Christian because Christianity didn't happen until the cross. And you look at all that, you know, Jesus had these carnal guys, not even carnal Christians, carnal guys hanging out with him. So it had it gave him lots of opportunities to overcome with people getting jealous and this and spirit of offense and all that kind of stuff. And so God blessed Jesus for what he had to put up with for 12 guys that really didn't even know him and didn't have a relationship except for in the natural with him. But with what all that happened in regards to the blood covenant that he did with the shedding of his blood on the cross. And he did that once again, he did it just for you. He did it just for you, not just you and me, but for you. And when you get the reality that he did that just for you. And, and I remember the times of reading the story and Jesus died and, and how they were all at, you know, by his graveside and they were weeping. He's gone. He's gone. You know, his life was over. And you know what most of the disciples did? The ones that were recorded, they all went back to their old jobs because their leader was gone. Peter went back to fishing and different things like that. You know, they went back to their old jobs because they didn't really have a plan if something were to happen to him. And, and it's kind of, my opinion, it's kind of sad that, you know, here you have everything built around Jesus and he dies, but he said, I'll be back in three days. Don't give up on me. But they just, most of the disciples just left. Mary stayed by his graveside and wept and wept and wept and came back the Sunday morning. And all of a sudden the stone was rolled away. The tomb was empty. And that's, every time I go to Israel, that's definitely one of my highlights, to say the least, is to see that. And once again, the stone, physically impossible for one person to move it, much less a person on the inside. Several angels had to move it away so that Jesus could come out of the grave. Once again, for you, just for you. And, but the thing is, have you felt sometimes that your dreams are dead and they're like in the grave? Have you ever felt alone? Did you feel like, like, God, where are you? Where are you? And I'm sure the disciples like, he left us. How could he leave us? Once again, he said, I'll be back in three days. But the reality of him coming back from the dead after three days was pretty much nil. Even though it was Jesus Christ doing the talking, it was pretty much nil. But as Jesus came from out of the grave and we realize he really didn't leave us. He went to the hell. He went to hell, got the keys so that we don't have to go to hell. He got it so that we can go to heaven, spend eternity with him. How awesome is that? Many times in my, I don't want to say many times, but several times in my life, I have felt very alone. And I remember one time in particular in the year 2000, I was in my office and I felt a hand on my shoulder. Now my door to my office was closed. I did have a window, uh, two windows actually. And, and I looked at my swivel chair and I'm like, who is that? I looked both ways. There, there wasn't anybody visible. But I did hear in that still small voice of the Holy Spirit, I said, 
I would never leave you nor forsake you. And that was one of the strongest things in my life that kept me going in a time when I had just been given a death sentence, had broken heart syndrome, breast cancer, hopelessness, lack of money, lost the church, lost everything, lost our home. And, and it was extremely devastating. But I will tell you that, though that was just for a season and resurrection life, got it all back. Thank you, Jesus, for that. There's a scripture I want to read to you in Romans 6, verses 4 and 5. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. Uh, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. For we have been united with him in a death like his, for we know that our old self was crucified with him. We are to live our lives in the way that glorifies God. This includes a close relationship with him and consecrating our lives for his will to come about in our lives. And that is very, very true, very, very powerful. When as he died, we die to self. And Jesus Christ, all power, all authority, he had the power to do anything, anything and everything. And he's crying out to God in the Garden of Gethsemane. God, let this cup pass from me. Let this cup pass from me. He saw how horrific his death and how painful his death was going to be. And he says, God, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not my will, but thine be done. And this is what God is asking of us. Not my will, but thine be done. Thine be done. Not my will, but whatever you want me to do. Father, I'm going to do whatever you have asked me to do. I'm going to go wherever you ask me to go. I'm going to talk to people wherever you, where you put people in front of me to talk to. And it's very exciting. And, and the thing is, is that he died on the cross for our salvation. But you know what? Everybody walking the streets, he also died for them too. That's why it's so important for us to get out of our comfort zone and to go and minister to them. Joan Hunter Ministries travels around the world sharing the healing power of God. Joan Hunter Ministries is touching lives all over the world through live streaming events, books and teachings, and our prayer call center where miracles happen daily. All of this is made possible by your prayers and support. When you partner with Joan Hunter Ministries, you not only bless those who receive the message, but you open a supernatural flow of blessing into your own life. Today is a day that my God's gonna supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory. Today is the day that God's gonna point to me as an example of His incredible wealth to become a monthly partner with Joan Hunter Ministries, call 1-281-789-7500 or go to joanhunter.org. Today is a day of alignment. Today is a day for financial breakthrough. Today is a day for your healing. Today is a day I don't have to wait any longer for the promises. Go to joanhunter.org to give a one-time gift or text any amount you'd like to give to 281-771-771. 1507. Become a partner with Joan Hunter Ministries today. Miracles are happening everywhere, and now you can proclaim it everywhere you go with the Miracles Happen t shirt and blanket. The t shirts come in all sizes and a variety of colors, as well as with rhinestones and without. The Miracles Happen t shirt is available for men and women. Get your shirt today and watch as God opens doors for you to pray for the sick around you. Both the Miracles Happen t-shirts and blanket are a constant reminder for all of us that miracles happen everywhere. And check out His Healing Promises. His Healing Promises is a selection of scriptures on healing read by Joan Hunter. If you need encouragement about your healing or faith to trust in God in a difficult time, this is for you. Let your spirit be lifted, your hope restored as you listen to God's healing promises over your life. Go to miraclesappen.tv now to order your Miracles Happen t-shirt, blanket, or your copy of His Healing Promises. Or call 281-789-7500. Miracles Happen! 
Hi, this is Joan Hunter. I just want to tell you, this is the most exciting year that I have ever experienced in my entire life. People say, retire, no, refire. This is the year that God has called this ministry to go way beyond what we've ever gone before. We are planning on right now, we have six countries in Africa scheduled. We have Pakistan scheduled, uh, Iceland scheduled, and many other places scheduled for next for the year 2023. You have an opportunity to be a part of that and helping us get to where we need to go and feed the people spiritually, teach them about healing of finances, teach them about the healing of their body, not only that, but their mind and their soul, and getting rid of trauma. One of the times that we have been in Africa to pray over the trauma and to see the people totally, completely set free of the trauma and the fear is absolutely amazing. I want you to be a part of what we're doing here at Joan Hunter Ministries in 2023. You can donate at joanhunter.org. Be sure to tag it missions. Any of you that would donate over $100 or more, then I want to send you a copy of this book. And this is an awesome, amazing, miraculous book, Healings, Miracles, and Supernatural Experiences. Subtitle is Healing for Haiti. It's our experience that we had in Haiti. Uh, and there was many people that didn't have the money to go. We ended up and took 38 people who had to believe God for it. The, the expense was $250,000. We went down there totally debt free. And I'm, I'm going to encourage you. It's going to be probably somewhere between one and a half million to $2 million for our outreaches next year as we touch the world. And you get to be a part of that. And the millions of people that are going to come to Jesus because of your donation and setting us around the world. And God bless you. Thanks for praying about it. God bless. I want to read another scripture in this 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And there, this is a time when it's referring to communion, uh, holy communion, whatever you want to do. I want to encourage you. There's a couple of ways and places you can do communion. You can do communion in churches, you know, in services, things like that. We always serve communion on Sunday, our Sunday night services. We also do communion as part of uh, our ordination classes, and which is like really amazing and awesome how God does that. But the thing I want is I, that I want to share with you is that you can have holy communion in your home. You can do it in your home. You can do it wherever you go. This is not something that once a month, once a quarter, you do at church. This is something that should be a part of our lives. And as it's a part of our lives, it will become amazing. It's also known as the meal that heals. And there are many people that are healed when they receive communion. Many times at Four Corners Conference Center in, in Tomball, they come forward one way, they receive communion, then they leave another way, and, and they're healed, which is like really awesome. And I wanna really, I just wanna encourage you that whatever it is that you are physically dealing with, emotionally dealing with, and see, once again, reminder, Jesus died on the cross of a broken heart, so your heart can be healed and whole, like mine, and I thank God for that. Also, another area in regards to communion that I always like to talk about, the word says, this do in remembrance of me, okay? This do in remembrance of me. What does that mean? Many times scriptures can be different, have different meanings, and as you have a different meaning where that's concerned, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Is this do in remembrance of me? Yes, what he did on the cross, he died for our sins, etc. That is also awesome. never to be forgotten what he did for us. He took stripes on his back, the whole bit, everything about him. But what's also important is what did he do for you today? What did he do for you today? What did he do for you yesterday? What did he do through you yesterday? What did he do through you today? And remember back about I prayed for this lady and she was totally dramatically healed of, you can fill in the blank, whatever, you know, what, whoever you had prayed for. 
I mean, I have so many people in the last 24 hours I prayed for, for healing, which is like really awesome. And in the last week, tons more, even out of the country. But see, the thing is, is what God wants to do. He wants to raise you up for such a time as this to be used of him in a supernatural way. And it's like, Father, I thank you for what you did for me yesterday. Father, I thank you for restoring my health. 24 years ago. I thank you, Father, for restoring my health at the end of 2023, giving me a brand new back. I thank God for that and and healing me of this. Father, I thank you how you have taken this bad situation that the enemy threw at me, turned it around and made a miracle out of it. Situations happened in the year 2000. What happened to me was not of God, but the end result, it was God. How he received me, healed me, set me free in my body, my mind, my soul, my spirit, and my finances. I can't ever ignore what he did to me and what he did for me in that. And just remembering how he gave me life when the doctors gave me a death sentence. You know, and even even recently, you know, last year, I don't know how much longer you're going to be able to walk because you're going to be crippled. That's nothing I want to hear. I've got way too much to do going all around the world this year and doing everything else. I need my back to do that. And my back is not for to be healed for my glory. It's to be healed for his glory so that I can go and to do what God's called me to do. And, and I remember literally just less than like three months ago, I see something on the ground. I couldn't pick it up, even if I was sitting in a chair. The pain was unbelievable, but Jesus healed me. I'm going to lean over. I'm going to get a cup. I'm going to have a little sip of the wonderful water that's in here. Three months ago, I couldn't have even picked this cup up. It would have hurt me so bad. I can bend over and I can pick stuff off the floor right now. This do in remembrance what he's done for you. I just kind of had a brief flashback of the excruciating pain that I was in. And I reminded him, you took stripes on your back that was painful so that my back doesn't hurt and my back doesn't hurt. He has healed me supernaturally and he gets all the glory for that. I want to read you another scripture. Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20. It says that then Jesus came close to them and said, all the authority of the universe has been given to me meaning Jesus. Now I'm going to give it to you. You can go in my authority, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because of the Holy Spirit resides in us, we have heavenly solutions for earthly problems. I'm going to scream, not really, but shout hallelujah on that one. And that's literally an understatement. As we spend time with God, we can seek the answers to the issues of every part of our lives. And as we seek his advice on everything, from jobs to children to finances, other issues, house issues, jobs, ministry, etc., we want to be reminded that we have been given authority to be the salt and the light in the world. If the world is getting darker, it's because the light in the world are not showing up in the darkness. He is sovereign. He is sovereign. But he has chosen us to be his vessels, to change and influence the world. Now, I'll tell you a really cool story. I was out in Arizona a couple of years ago. My daughter was looking at getting a new car. And she wanted me to go on the test drive with her. And you like this car? Can I get into the back seat? 
you know, because it's kind of got a slant, slant roof and, you know, a front seat, whichever. And uh, she wanted to make sure I could get in it okay with no problem, which I did. And all of a sudden, we're walking around the dealership and there's this man following me. It was a little awkward. And I'm like, why is he following me? <laughs> and I'd never had that experience before. And so he's coming, not, not after me, but he's like following me wherever I went. And he comes up to me, and goes, who are you? And I'm like, Joan, I'm her mother, <laughs> you know? And uh, he goes, no, who are you? He says, I felt the atmosphere shift. And I was sitting at my desk and he goes, something shifted here in the dealership. And he went to find out who was there, who shifted the atmosphere. He was a spirit-filled Christian. And I ended up, and I got his address. I mailed him a bunch of books and things like that. And he goes, are you Joe Smoyer? I said, thank you very much, but no. And, uh, but I said, you know, are you on TV? Yes, I'm on TV, et cetera. But I just want to encourage you. You can walk in and all of a sudden, just like that, something happened. Somebody walked in here with the anointing and that's you. You can shift the atmosphere wherever we go. As we celebrate this time of Easter, once again, reminded of what led up to Resurrection Sunday and remind you of all that he's done for you. I want to encourage you to spend this week thanking God for everything he's done for you, but also what he's got in store for you. If you need healing, this is your season to be healed. If you need financial breakthrough, this is your season for financial breakthrough. He suffered everything on the cross, around the cross in those three years so that we don't have to suffer anymore. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for what you've called us to do. And Father, right now, I thank you for becoming more real to them than ever before. That we appreciate you sending your son to die on the cross, to take stripes on his back, to die of a broken heart for each one of us to die so that we could live, spend eternity with you, but also have an abundant life here on the earth. Father, right now, I ask you to bless each person in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Have an amazing Easter. And thank you so much for watching Miracles Happen. And we'll be back next week with another show. God bless you. Miracles Happen. Thanks for watching Miracles Happen. Contact us at miraclesHappen.tv or give us a call at 1 281 789 7500 or connect with Joan on Facebook at facebook.com slash Joan Hunter. And make sure to join us next week for Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracles happen.